this is a playful event, it's fun. So can you do something to reflect that? So I gave it long consideration. And all I could come up with was a picture of a waistcoat. Okay? So if I get a bit heavy, every so often I'll go... So then you can smile, okay? Right. Uh, I wear a number of hats. Uh, the first one is I'm involved in a natural world organisation which stands for Global Transparency and Accountability. Uh, that's sort of going after the bad guys, trying to put their names in headlights and things like that. But that's for another day. One of the things that uh, started that was my passion about health. Uh, or not so much health, but the problems that we encounter as humans, especially in the Western world. And the suppression that's involved in health is enormous, I'm sure you know about this. So I started to research this from about 15 years ago. Uh, and it hasn't stopped. And I learn new things almost on a daily basis. My passion is cancer treatments, natural ones, of course. Uh, so let's start with a few facts, if I may, just to try and put this into perspective. Does it, anybody know how many people die each year in the UK of death? Any ideas? No ideas? It's amazing, they don't have their eye It's about half a million. Now, do you all understand the term degenerative disease and what it actually means, what it encompasses? It's really any illness disease that starts from within the body, the breaking down of the cells, degenerating. So, we're looking at cancers, heart attacks, stroke, diabetes, Parkinson's. It all starts within the body. Is that okay? Do you accept that? So, as a percentage, as a percentage out of half a million people that die each year, shout out some percentages of how many people die from a degenerative disease in the, in the UK. 80? 95? 74? 40? Okay, let's go with the 40 just to start with. So that's 200,000 people. What do you think the other 300,000 people tend to die from then? Give us some ideas. Okay, well, accidents. People can die from home, office, work, and all that. On the roads, how many people die each year on the roads? Any idea? 2,700, so really insignificant. Uh, people still die from viral bacteria infections. And there's another word we tend to use a lot of that these days. The iatrogenics, who said of that? Iatrogenics means death by doctoring. These are facts. Doctors misprescribing drugs, overprescribing drugs, adverse effects of drugs, infections in hospitals, surgery going wrong. This is serious stuff. In America, it's unofficially the, world, the, 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 the first cause of death. We don't know what it is over here because it's, it's like all this information, it's very much suppressed. So the figure is 90%. These stats are out there. Uh, we looked at, uh, they show about 100 types of cancer. There's about 200 altogether. They show the figures about 100 of them. Are the diapasms, uh, circuitry, respiratory. So 90% have died from degenerative disease in the UK. Which is why I say to people, nobody in this room is going to die of old age. I'm sorry to say that, but it's an actual it's a fact. We know that 
the DNA. We live between 120 and 140 years. And people do that. So you know that's a fact. People do live to, to those ages in certain parts of the world. And I've met them as well. Uh, of course, they don't have a remote control with them. But they do live completely different lifestyle to ours. So, if I say that I thought in the main the degenerative disease was, uh, hang on. Thank you. Uh, in the main it was self-inflicted. You may have your own ideas about that, I'm sure you have. Uh, so, what, what happens? Why is this happening? No one dies of old age, and most people die of a disease. Now, you may have your beliefs, uh, whatever your God, but I'm sure most gods didn't plan this. I, I don't know this for a fact, but I'm pretty sure they did. It wasn't planned. We weren't put on this planet, however you think we got here, to die of a disease. You may think we did that, but no, but, uh, I don't think we did. So, why is it happening? Well, there are two areas I could talk about on that. One is like uh, the microcosmic effect, and that's the individual, what you do. What you do to actually get involved with degenerative disease. So, pollution. Pollution externally is a problem. This is about chemicals. All you can do there is to, to mitigate where you live, try and reduce your exposure to whatever's out there. Then you have chemicals in the house, in the home. All the materials that we use for cleaning the house, etc. Uh, how many people know that there are massive amounts of chemicals in carpets, upholstery, and we aren't ingesting them? Our pets are dying more and more from cancer. Those poor things, their nose is on the on the Oh, isn't it? Right next to the carbon. Uh, so that's an issue. And the third part of that is what you do to yourself. What do you put on the body? Is it chemical free? I hope it is, is it? Because again, in the last five to ten years, the research has shown that we do absorb a lot of stuff from shampoos, sodium sulfates, and uh, toothpaste is going into our bloodstream. Uh, what you put on the body, the creams, makeup, it's full of chemicals. And it's taken us a long time to realise this is a problem. And it really, really is. So then we have uh, dehydration. How many people really drink water in the quantities that we may do so to be, to be healthy? If you become inevitably dehydrated, you uh, suffer a chronic cellular dehydration. Again, your cells breaking down. So hydration is very important. The dreaded diet. This is a, a minefield, isn't it? What should we be eating? Uh, well, let's just assume that uh, the average person is eating processed food. Uh, it's all cooked food. It's any type of food. Uh, most people eat taste, don't they? How many people look at a plate of food and say, wow, is this going to meet my nutritional needs for the day? Do you think that when eating food? You do, good girls. And that's what should happen. Of course, taste is important and you should enjoy the taste as well. But it's also important to realise food is fuel for the body. Without it, I'm amazed the body lasts as long as it does, actually. The fact that you do not feed it the right fuel all the time. So then we have uh, exercise, staying on the move. Do we have too much exercise, the wrong type of exercise? I mean, girls in particular should get into weight-bearing exercise. How many people know that your, your bones grow with the muscle? So tone the muscle to get the bones and stay away from osteoporosis and things like this. Uh, it's important to stay on the move. I mean, I run upstairs wherever, in the underground, I run up some huge long stairs. I think I'm mad, of course, but it's important to get, I run between the offices, I run to the warehouse, I run wherever, I'm in the room, I play sport, I 
martial artist, so I'm always on the poop. And I'm still playing sport today, as I was 30, 40 years ago. And next year I'll be 69, and I, and I haven't stopped. Don't stop. But to do that, you need to feed the body. You need to give yourself the right fuel and hydration and everything else. So, let's exercise. Uh, you may not have heard of uh, Michael to allude to it, stress. Anyone heard of stress? Stress is a killer, isn't it? Stress is a killer in so many forms. With stress, you experience on a daily basis, your family, friends, work. But of course, the other thing we tend not to talk about too much is uh, emotions, trapped emotions, past experiences that we keep inside the body, which is manifesting in some way out into what we're doing today. Can you, does, it, does that sound true? So, all those things have to be dealt with. Now, if you become ill, you contract a degenerative disease like cancer. There's not just one thing you need to do, it's, it's holistic. You've got to address all those issues to really, really try and get the body back into line. So, I won't talk about that now, but. Uh, so that's what we do to ourselves to create a problem in the first place. For me, the second part of that is the macro aspect, and that is the medical industry, the pharmaceutical industry, the suppression of good natural treatments out there. It is corrupt, it is criminal what's going on. And I got involved really when the EU started to change how we could deal with herbs and vitamins and minerals back in 2010. And I worked with Robert Vicker, I don't know if you've heard of him, and uh, Dawn Alexander, and uh, the, the Joining Hands in Health campaign, and others. But of course, I was saying to Robert and others at the time, we haven't got to open hell. We're just not going to win this. And the problem for me was we were too fragmented. There were people all over the country doing good things, but fragmented. We had no voice. We couldn't take on the EU, the medical, pharmaceutical. So that's one of the reasons that really helped us to push forward with the natural world organization to try and get a voice out there. And that's still sort of happening. Uh, in the UK, who's heard of the 1939 Cancer Act? Did you know there was such an act? 1939 Cancer Act. Look, 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 look I've got a pink, I'm wearing a pink shirt on. I'm wearing a pink Hello, I'm wearing a pink shirt. Are you okay? Are you, are you unhappy? Are you not unhappy? Yeah, uh, because you walked out, yes. Okay, that's my, my, my. Yeah, hey. Oh, thank you. That's Fred Ben. He's going to get a drink. <laughs> and Nathan as well. <laughs> Good. Uh, so, be careful with what you do. <laughs> Paranoid me? No, never. So, uh, the Cancer Act, 1939, prohibits people like me and others from talking about treatments with cancer. It's against the law for me to talk about it. Do I care? That's right. Uh, you've heard of B17 and MMS. Well, people are still being arrested. Even this week, somebody was arrested for selling apricot kernels in their shop. This week. Unbelievable. Because we made that illegal in the early 2000s because it may have been helping people. And we tend to suppress them. So the cancer act is certainly something we want to address when we are in the position to do so. And we will. Uh, we're talking to people about similar pieces of legislation in other countries. And again, we've got to come together. 
on, on that. So, the medical industry, the doctors, I have a lot of respect for them in one particular area, and that's A and E. Yeah? Why? Well, we leave the world in that, don't we? I'm so anti drugs, you have no idea. If I'm in a car accident, take me to the A and E. Feel me drugs, surgery, I don't mind. Fantastic. Well, I talk to doctors about this and say, look guys, you, you do know you're trained in hospitals in the environment of illness. And they, they agree, they say, yeah. I say, so when you become a GP, what happens? You move over. And you've not got acute illnesses or severe accidents. You've got this dreaded chronic degenerative disease aspect of life. So what training do you have on that? Because you diagnose and you prescribe drugs in hospitals. You tend to do the same as a GP. And then I do have some very interesting chats with doctors off the record. And they agree. That's what they have to do. And those that do look at alternative natural treatments do so very quietly. They're afraid because their associations forbid and control as to what they can and cannot do. Welcome back. Where's my drink? <laughs> so, uh, So, uh, doctors, great, but they need to redesign really what they're doing when it comes to chronic. And um, how about this? I love asking the question, Doc, why do we still have chronic illness, chronic disease in this day and age? Isn't that something that we can't really cure? And you therefore maintain it with drugs? Is this not undergoing? What do you think? We shouldn't have chronic illness today, should we? With the knowledge we've got and the, the access to treatments out there, it just shouldn't be. Uh, when people come to me because they have a loss of health, or not documentation, we say a loss of health. And you can substitute whatever word is your illness into the loss of health. So, for cancer. And I'm often asked to go and speak to consultant with them because people are afraid to ask the questions. And so we ask the questions to get information, the facts. Now, it may sound as though I'm pretty anti established when it comes to the medical industry, especially for cancer. Well, actually, I'm not. All we're trying to do is to establish facts and the truth. I'm trying to get information, for example, how many people are successful going down the chemo route. They all think it's very successful because they still do it. Well, let me see the figures. Uh, you may have heard people talk about one in three people will contract cancer in a lifetime, or it could be one in two and a half, one in two. Well, a top surgeon, a neurosurgeon, tumors of cancer, last week, Radio Forbes has to be right, made a statement that three or four people today are contracting cancer. It's getting worse. But we're winning the battle, aren't we, on cancer? Cancer research, UK, tells us that all the time, don't they? But they still want money. I'm afraid I do advise people not to give a penny to cancer charities, I'm afraid. But, uh... Oh, thank you. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. So uh, it's, it, is, it is a concern. Uh, and again, there's a lot to talk about in you know, what you can do about that. So what can you do about it? You can become enlightened, empowered, self-empowered. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Pollution. Once you understand about pollution, you do what you can to remove that threat from your life. From your Families' lives. Uh, hydration and drink your water. Lots of it. If you go to the doctor, they 
people say that uh, you should drink between six and eight glasses a day. Does that, does that sound about right? That's what they say. And I say, hang on, if he's eight stone, at least 18 stone, is that still the same? So that, that's a good point. Of course, it's based on your weight. You drink based on your weight. It's a formula for that. So hydration is really important. Uh, diet. This is the area. We're going to be divided, I know, on what you eat and what we think we shouldn't be eating. How about this? Because I'm, let me confess, I'm an organic, raw food vegan. So when you're eating animals, think about this. You're eating second-hand food. Now, the animals that you eat, if you do eat animals in here, they're all vegan, aren't they? They're all vegan. The animals that we eat are vegan. This is where I go, <laughs> what do they know that we don't? So those animals that have been eating uh, plant-based food, whatever, all that, and that they use all the vitamins and minerals from that sort of food, and they eat amino acids. Now this for me is key. They eat amino acids, and within their body, their flesh and body, it creates the protein around the body that it needs. I'm going to say, we don't need to eat protein. Because what we should be eating are amino acids. And the amino acids come from plant-based food. The same as it gets into the animals that we eat. So, those animals, and I'm sure you know by now that some of the largest, strongest animals in the world are vegan. So what are we missing? I don't understand this. So I believe it's a myth for the protein. It's very important that we make among ourselves. So we need amino acids. Uh, I hear stories about, I have a friend, he's a vegetarian. But he always looks ill. And I said, wow, that's fascinating. Have you ever met a person who eats meat and they look ill? Oh, well, mm -hmm. nobody ever mentioned that. It's only vegetarians that look ill. Vegans, well, that's a matter altogether. But because you're a vegan or a vegetarian, you still got to eat a balanced meal. You still got to ensure you get right across what you feel we should be eating. And you can do that. We eat a lot of food, uh, amazingly, which is raw, but it's also hot. This is what confuses people. Most of my food on a daily basis is hot, but it's totally raw. How about that? Because I like hot food, actually. It's easier to eat, but it's, it's fantastic. They're never quite the same. If you want to know about that, come and have a chat afterwards. So, uh, we get everything that we need to keep reasonably healthy and happy. I think, I hope. So, exercise. Get the right exercise. Keep on the move. Weight train, or at least uh, weight bearing exercise around the body. Just do a bit each day. Stairs, as I said earlier, fantastic. A great aerobic exercise. But don't overdo it. I believe that marathons, who likes running a, a marathon? Anybody? This is good news because that's not that healthy, right? It, just, it really does put a massive strain on the body. Well, I don't believe there are many old marathon runners about, but I uh, don't know for sure, that's just what I've been told. So, Exercise is important, the right type, and play with it. Sport is a great way of, of exercising. I prefer to play sport than actually go to a gym and exercise. Uh, so stress. <laughs> well, you've got kids, foster them out. It's a brilliant way to get rid of stress. <laughs> uh, family, don't 
don't talk to them. <laughs> and friends, or what one can say. But you need to control it and understand it. It is important. And this event is about fun and, and playing, isn't it? It's about relaxing. I know it's hard for me to relax and talk about this stuff, but you've got to do that. Uh, and that's up to you what you do. Uh, if you've got trapped traumas in the body, and most people don't want to have, EFT, holy EFT, emotional freedom technique, is great. It, it does seem to work. Uh, and there are many other things you can do to really relax and let go of what's going on within you. Okay? Uh, so, I could go into detail about many things, but she hasn't hit me with a bell here, so any questions, because I do like to interact and be put to the test, but don't forget, I'm a martial artist. Anything? Yes, with a complication, viral bacteria is another issue. And when you can deal with those as well, you want to approach to the yes. So I do, I think we have the, the uh, oh, she's here. <laughs> now I think we have the ability and the, and, and the knowledge and the natural ingredients to deal with most things. But of course, the idea is to be healthy in the first place. I talk to people about like this and Lewis, I'm healthy, you don't have to talk to me. And I say, well, cancer tumors can take 15, 20 years to manifest as a tumor. So how do you know you're, you're well? So understand this, understand the body, what the body needs and prevent it. Do what you can. Guarantees? No. But you can really, really reduce the chance of contracting, I think, anything. Did you have a question? Good. <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> what do I do? I'll talk about health. Uh, I, I'm MD of a company in the health industry. And we market water ionizers. Uh, water ionizers. See, I didn't mention that when I mentioned drinking water, because I don't like to, to bring that up, actually. Uh, and other things as well to do with health. The water ionizer company. But we do other things. So, but I'm also involved, as you heard, in that sort of organisation. Uh, we're trying to get that really going. Uh, we've been looking at some of the international incidents in the last two years. Uh, last year I was with, uh, have you heard of Yulia Tabashenko? The PM in the Ukraine that's just come out of jail. It's kind of a bit funny. The president, no? She got plaques, the blonde plaques. So I was with her. Yes. N W O hyphen I G O, which stands for Intergov Intergovernmental Organization. Dot org. NWA. Doesn't sound good, new world order. Hyphen IGO. Dot org. IGO. Intergovernmental Organization. Dot org. I hear a bell. <laughs> <laughs> 